Welcome back everyone and today we're going to look at an issue that I have and you probably do have too is that the screens that are on the back of these little cameras are really tiny and it's really difficult to see the detail without zooming in etc etc and that's for photographs and video this is not exclusive to photography because if it was just photography I'd have it set up tethered and that would be great but actually I have the same issue with video in that, yeah, we've got Atmoses, et cetera, which show me whether stuff's in focus and everything else, but it's not really a perfect solution. It's still only a tiny seven inch screen. If I've got other people in the room as well looking, it makes it really, really difficult. So I decided to look for an extra little monitor and that's what we're gonna look at today. So, I've been and ordered a little 12 inch screen. Now they did do a bigger version and I could have gone for that. But it's a lovely, lovely little screen. It's very, very thin. See there, really, really thin. Probably, a, well, it's probably about the same thickness as an iPhone, maybe a little bit thicker. Beautiful. Now the great thing about it, it's got a visa mount on the back which is perfect for what I want. Now, other uses for this have actually been, I've used it on Nintendo Switch. Um, I can actually use it as a second screen on my iPad or my laptop as well, because it works, it's got a touch screen. This is great as a little additional screen. It's so useful in that respect. If I'm using it off the laptop, it uses USB-C, so it's all self-powered. It's great. Um, yeah. Not what I was expecting, I've got to be honest. I bought it for this use and I found other uses for it. So I put a little monitor bracket onto the back there and it's, I suppose it's just a sort of mic bracket one, just slots onto that. And that's just gonna go on top of my light stand. And that is gonna enable me to see whatever I'm shooting in higher detail, which is great being able to see that. But also if I'm doing video as well, everyone can see, it's a lot clearer to see that everything is in focus. And I think that's really important um, and it's so easy to miss. So let's set this up and have a little look. So we've got the screen here and we've got it outputting onto here. And obviously it is just what the camera is outputting basically onto there on HDMI, which on photos is great because we're just getting a larger view into there I can obviously zoom in as well. So when I zoom in on there, we're zooming right in and I can see the detail. I can see all the dust that's on that flower that's been there for ever and a day, which is great. Um, and that's nice just being able to have that and just have that screen where people can stand around and look and we can comment and talk about the image that we've taken as well, which is fantastic. But obviously when we're using it for video, you're gonna get so much more out of that having that larger screen. Now, yeah, they do seven inch screens, which are nice and portable. In fact, we've got one over here that I use in this case, and it's got its, it's, got its purpose. It is fantastic in the fact that it's portable, it fits in that case nicely, but it is bloody difficult to see and to see if everything's in sharp, basically. We're in focus. Now, I know that has got focus peaking on it and I can put it on, but even so, from a distance, it's very difficult to see. And especially if you are doing stuff for yourself and you want to see how you look on screen, that is going to be amazingly difficult, at least with a 12 inch screen. And if you go bigger and have some, one of the bigger screens, even better. Um, I was trying to draw a line between having a size that was portable and having a size which was great for viewing. Would I have gone for the bigger one? Quite possibly. Um, happy with what we've got there, but yeah, I probably would have gone for the slightly bigger one now. So I think they do a 16 inch or 15 inch one, um, which is pretty awesome really. You think how large iPads and everything else are. I thought that was going to be satisfactory. It is good. Don't get me wrong. It's so much better being able to look at stuff and to see that. I love how slim and thin it is. Now it does come with a few extra bits and pieces. So it came with some cables, 
I had to buy the cable that went into this because it was a micro D cable uh, to mini HDMI. So I had to buy that separate, but it does come with a load of other ones. So we've got USB-C cables in there. We've got mini HDMI to HDMI, USB-C to USB-A connector. That's ours. Um, and it comes with a little desktop stand as well, which is great when I'm using it on the Mac. Now, that being said, using this on the Mac, even though it's got a touch screen, you can't really use the touch screen on a Mac. On Windows, apparently it works fine. I have managed to use the touch screen onto this in clone mode because it effectively acts as a mouse. And when you put it into desktop extended mode, it's only using it as a mouse on the main screen not the extended screen, so it doesn't quite work in that way. And in all fairness, they don't claim it to work, they even tell you it doesn't at all, um, but it does work. And if you're using it in clone, it's great. If you're using it as a extra bit and piece connecting on the main, that's also good, because what it can do is that if you have this out here, for instance, and I've got my laptop into there, and we've got people looking at it, and we're using it tethered, then actually they can use that to touch and move stuff around, which is actually it's quite a neat little feature. So I've found so many more uses out for this since I've had it, which I find really strange that I've managed to do that. Whether I'm going to remember to do that every time, I normally like a device for a set purpose, and that's its purpose, and I don't mix and match, because I don't have time to reset up and move elsewhere. This is designed to be portable so that I can take it onto location, and people can see what they're doing. One of the things we have is when we do videos and we do interviews, is that quite often the person who's been interviewed wants to see what they look like. They want that little representation to know that they're sitting right and they're not sitting awkward. It's very difficult with a tiny screen, even a seven inch screen, to turn that around and do that. With this, actually, it's no hassle. We can turn it around so they've got a view of themselves as well. So there's plus points all around here for this. Um, it is an alternative to seven inch monitors. I think we will start to see these come out with focus peaking and everything else in the future, I don't know. I'm hoping that's the case, because it must be a really easy feature for them to implement into there, and it would be great to see. Um, so yeah, we'll look forward to those, into that. But this was just a simple little video to show you this screen as something you might want to consider. If you have the problem of not being able to see yourself, hey, great for selfies. If you've got your camera in the studio and you're trying to do something as well, and you've got the remote control in your pocket, you're trying to do a shot, but it's really difficult to see yourself. Even if you've got a flip screen, it's so tiny, you're not gonna see this. Actually, it's quite good. Short video, hope you liked it. If you wanna check out the screen, there's a link down below. Um, yeah, see you on the next one. Good.